Hello, my name is Miguel Latronica, and I'm the inventor of the Mighty Body Band, and I'm with... Marcy Caron. And together, we are going to have a great time. We're going to work with the Mighty Body Band Light. We're going to show you the five different functions of the Mighty Body Band Light, how to switch it out. We'll be working into some warm-ups and then graduating into a nice flow as it is replicated from the manual. Mercy, want to... Basically, we're going to bring your manual to life. We're going to bring your manual to life, exactly. So with the end in mind, by the time you have finished with this video, working with us for 20 to 30 minutes, you will know how to switch out the Mighty Body Band. You'll know when to use the PNF loop, the accessory uh, that, that you can purchase with the Mighty Body Band Light. So let's begin. Okay, so great. the first thing that we want to show you is that we have the Mighty Body Band Light hooked up to a wall, but the Mighty Body Band Light has been built and designed to use in your home. So rather than you having an anchor point into a wall, you would be using your door, or perhaps you would put an eye bolt into the wall and use it the same way. But the principle is the same, that it lengthens and it anchors your body so that you can work on otherwise, um, and uh, otherwise on unstable angles, okay? So the very top of this, we have a little, we call a ladder lock buckle, and as you'll see, when I lift it up, the band lengthens, and you'll notice that the, the longer or the more stretched out and lengthened it is, the less um, stable the angle is, so, or more stable it is, and when I, retract it, it's actually less stable. So there are times when you want it, when you want to be lengthened away from the wall and in towards the wall. So that's that. The other thing is that there are five different functions and we're not going to take you through all the different functions right now, but we'll take you through them as we work with the unit. So all you have to do is just follow along. We'll go nice and slowly. And then of course in the future, you'll be able to order all kinds of different DVDs and different work Workouts, and then at that time you will have really mastered the Mighty Body Band. And is there anything you want to add to that, Marcy? No, we're just going to show you how easy it is to work and um, how functional it can be. Yes, yeah, exactly. And I guess if there is one thing that I would say is like, as you see this unit, right, this is what you get as it comes to you with all of this, except it comes with a lateral door strap and a portable um, door anchor. You'll notice here to my right, we have, Mar both Marcy and I, we have a PNF loop. This is the optional accessory, and uh, to be perfectly honest with you, 90% of the people, they just get the accessory. It really brings, it really adds a nice dimension to the band. And we'll show you how to use this. It takes one, two, three to hook it up, very easy. So for now, we're gonna put the optional accessory off to the side and I think we'll just begin. What do you think okay, Marcy? That sounds good. All right so the first thing that we're going to do is maybe just lengthen what we call the toe band halfway and halfway is when the two ends come together right? I'm and just going to add in that that's the kind of thing that once you get used to using it you'll get an idea oh I need to move closer to the wall or I'm too far away. Exactly. And it just kind of becomes natural. Absolutely. That's right, Marcy. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through some warm-ups at first. So we're going to work the shoulders. We're going to get some movement into the knees and into the feet. But but really, to you know, the shoulder cuffs are more prone to soft tissue injury. Um, and so you need to warm them up when you do um, any kind of a workout. So let's begin. First thing we're going to do is we're going to lean our body back and walk the feet forward. Now we're on a mat and of course your feet have to be dry. You wouldn't put lotion on before you started working out with the Mighty Body Band because stable angles are everything, right? Really and important. from here, you can see I can lower myself and then I pull myself back up. And if it feels it's too much of an angle, I walk my feet back. And I get it just right so that I can pretty much straighten out the arms. Always a slight bend and then I pull back up. When you're using a band, a lot of times when you're working away from it, it's on an exhalation. When you pull towards it, it's on an inhalation. And right now what we're doing is we're warming up the ankles and we're warming up the shoulders and arms. And we come back and forth like that. We can walk back nice and easy and we can drop down and take it a little bit deeper into the 
knees. So this pose here, it's a nice pose. In yoga, they call this malasana. And here, my hips are up off of the floor. My head can hang. Always bend in the elbows. And then again, I can straighten out. And I can even pull myself slightly forward. Exhaling, dropping back nice and easy. Bending the knees. And you just find a nice flow coming up. So we're starting to work all the different joints. We're starting to bring blood and oxygen deeper, right, into the muscles of the body. I'm going to come down and just hold it for a moment, get a nice release into the low back. I take a nice deep inhalation. And then when I exhale, right, you will let your head hang easy. It feels really nice. It feels so good. Opening up the back side of the body. Mm-hmm. You can feel the fascia releasing. Everything feels really nice. I'm going to slowly pull myself up nice and easy. And then what we're going to do is the whole band actually has all these different rotating um, pivots on it, pivot points. And to open up now, the front of the shoulders, I get my body in a nice stable angle. And when you're doing this with us, you want to watch to never lower yourself too much. You've got to stay nice and, and active into the shoulders. And so you'll just pull yourself up, exhale forward, always staying in control. If it's hard to pull yourself back up, you know you've gone too deep, right? It's a challenge to pull yourself up, but it's a healthy challenge. Well, what's really nice about this at the beginning is you can start to get your relationship with the band. So you can see how much it's going to help, and you can't let it do all the work, though. That's so right, it's a partnership. That's exactly right. And even me, you'll notice, or both of us, you'll notice our back of our femur bones, the back of the thighs, right? And the hamstrings are working to the wall behind us. And we exhale as we come forward, in as we pull up. Always monitoring the wrist, making sure that none of the joints are hyperextended. And then we're going to do this. So we're going to come into a nice 90 degree and work the feet back and again I've got a nice 30 degree angle in my arms and just a little bit you're not going quite as deep as you were in the other poses but you certainly feel other parts of the muscles just really opening up just like that and it just feels nice good maybe three more times exhaling forward inhaling back up very nice and then we're going to come into a nice side body bend so with the mighty body bend we try to open up the side body um, sooner rather than later so the leg that's furthest away from the door or in this case the wall will come out in front of you and you'll notice I have a nice healthy bend in my right arm right and then I can take my left arm up over the head and I can just lower myself but again always a bend into that elbow and slowly exhaling and there are really nice ways to do this with the um, PNF loop as well the optional accessory that comes with this should you choose to purchase it good and then we'll do the other side. I pivot nice and easy. And Marcy, maybe you want to walk them through this side. Through the front leg. Stacked. It's really nice for the underarm. You can just feel that nice stretch here, even down into the IT band. All right. Beautiful. You really get to be on this nice angle that you wouldn't normally be on, so the muscles are already turning on. Yep, it feels really nice, and it's really nice action into the shoulders and into the hips. Beautiful. And then we're going to come up, and maybe we'll just get some nice extension in the spine. So from here, we get a nice, healthy angle, and you'll see. I'm slightly bent into the elbows because, again, never hyperextended, and you can see I start to get a nice extensioning in the back side of the body. I pull myself slightly forward, and then even here I can lower myself slightly down. Now I'm, it works very different muscles as opposed to when I came into the pose earlier because my legs are further away from the wall. Always keep the toes grounded. Have fun with this. Breathe. Have a playful face. Good. 
And what do you think? Maybe three more times, Marcy? Yeah. Exhale and down. Establish our relationship with the band. Yes. Drawing the shoulder blades down the back to protect the shoulders. Very nice. And then slowly we're going to come up. And nice and easy fold. Good. I think what I would like to do just for one more before we switch out into another function is we're going to walk slightly forward. Shoulder blades are pulled back nice and easy. Just like this. And then all I do is I kind of lean over to my left and I get a nice stretch in the outer leg and then again I slowly over to the right. You can feel the Achilles on the back of the leg, the calf muscle. So really nice stretch. Relax. Inhaling. You can even pivot up. It's like you come up on your toes when you come up to the other side and exhaling back down. Always you keep push that hip out, get some IT band as well as the calf. Uh -huh. Yes, really nice. And really work the outside edge to the of the foot into the floor, watching the breath, exhaling. And one more time to the right. And then to the left. Up on the toes you come, back down nice and easy. And then what we'll do is maybe come into our first forward bend. So from here, I walk my feet slightly back and then maybe I lengthen and I pull myself back. And again, forward. Never any jolting. It should feel nice. And this pose picks up where the other one left off. In that, it really works the calf muscles. So we opened up into the shoulders, brought some warmth, some lubrication into the joints. Now we're working the um, ankles and the feet. And then slowly, we're just going to come up nice and easy. Talk about the trust issue here, right? So you yeah. Really have worked on that relationship. So I'm trusting that I'm not going to go falling forward and grounded and slowly bring yourself up. Very nice. And we're both going to end up nice and easy. Up. Beautiful. And then we'll turn around and come back. So that was a lot of fun. That feels great. Yes. Really. So let's retract our band. So we'll take all the slack back out of the toe band and then what we're going to show you is, right now, this first function was what we call a double loop with the handles connected. And so you'll see there's one loop and then another. So what we're going to do, there are two heavy duty aluminum buckles and I'm going to push the sides in and then now look, that double loop now converts into what we call the extended handles. And what's really nice about the extended handles, it actually works almost like a seesaw, right? You can get this really nice movement, a sliding motion. And what's nice about this is I've got a really nice wingspan here so I can open up with nice wide arms into the poses, right? Coming back and then up nice and easy. Just to sort of monitor where my range of motion is. Never overdoing it, right? And with the extended handle mode, we do a lot of fun things. Like, for example, what we're going to do is we're going to turn around and we're going to take the handles and you'll do the same on the inside of the, in between the arms and the torso. Just like this. And these are still the warm-ups here. And I walk my feet back and all I do is I kind of pick up where I left off before but now my arms are much more engaged and I really get a sense of my balance here, right? So you do want to add in, because it is on that slide option, you have to be really in control of both of your arms. So one you do. slide in front. That's right. And a lot of times, uh, as Marcy just alluded to, your muscular imbalances will show up here because one arm will fire up or be more stronger than the other. And then what we do is we take it a little bit deeper by bringing the feet together, just like this. So again, you'll have a tendency to wanna fall over to the right or to the left. Just maintain your sense of balance and check everything out. Make sure your feet are in a stable angle and they wouldn't go sliding. And then what we're going to do, for the last part of our warm-ups is we're going to lift one leg up and then just slowly with control come down like that and then back up and the leg comes behind you just like that. Up and forward. It's really more about 
getting a nice sense of balance. So it almost feels like it's like a Tai Chi kind of a thing here, right? And then we'll do the other side. Feet come together nice and easy, and then slowly. You'll lift your leg up, and you'll have a tendency to fall to the left if the left leg is up, and maintain it, and just gently drop down, and nice, fine motor control back. It doesn't have to be really far back. Now, if I wanted to make it wider, I would just lengthen my toe band, and that's set. And then slowly, we'll just come forward for one more, lengthening out into the shoulders. Stay really nice and firm into the core. Thumbs are down, so you get the nice extra rotation of the shoulders. Mm -hmm. I like to add a little Yep, and swing. come over to the... Beautiful. And then Marcy, is there anything else you want to include in the warm-up before we start moving through some of the more core poses? I think that looks good. I think that that's good. Okay. And what we'll do is we'll retract the toe band all the way up. So we've already gone from the double loop with handles to now what we call the extended handles, right? From a double loop to extended. Now what we're going to do is we are going to take our handles off and you can set them to the floor or in our studio we have these pegs and we take the handles off and we put them up on the pegs that's convenient to use. And then, so the third mode is how we take it now from extended handles and it switches into a single loop. Now, I've got a loop that I've just created. And you'll see the buckles and different things, it's, they slide out of the way. So that's really nice. What we're gonna do is gonna pull the buckles up towards the top so I've got a nice working room here. And then I'm going to lengthen my toe band uh, maybe about three quarters of the way. And I'm then- I'm gonna add in that you cannot put these together wrong. You, as long as you hear the click, yep. you're good to go. That's right. So you just wanna really be sure that you're listening for that. See, I can't do it this way. So I just wanna make sure and then there's, there's no twists going on. That's a good point. That's right, because when you lengthen it out, you don't want the twist. The twist just, uh, it just feels funny on the body. So you make sure it's nice and straight. It's the same way you would put on a belt around the loops of your pants, right? So we're gonna come up over it. And when we come into the loops, we usually bring it up over the head. And then a lot of times it just comes right out through the feet. Not always, but sometimes. So what's really nice here is now my arms are really freed up. I've been doing a lot of things where I was holding the handles. I've built up some heat and brought some oxygen deeper and nutrients into the muscles. So now what I want to do is I want to come, we want to come into a nice what we call down dog. And you can do this with or without chairs, okay? So a lot of times I'm going to have Diana bring me a chair. So she'll bring me a chair. Thank you, Diana. And I'll show the version without the chair. And then Marcy without it, right. So here for the first time, you'll have your chair with you. And I start to walk my feet back. And again, stable angles are everything. I can push the chair slightly away. And this is really nice because I feel very stable. I feel safe. And what's happening is now I'm getting some really nice actioning into the legs, my outside. I'm gonna walk them through. If you're not using the mm -hmm. chair, you're gonna bring your feet, bend the knees, find your connection here so you always feel stable. I walk the feet back and lift my hips up at the same time so that I can make my connection here. I don't really need the chair, but the idea is that you're getting that nice stretch without any pressure on your wrists or shoulders. Very nice. Do we talk about the loop goes right on the hip bone, so it really gives you a nice connection point. Yes, it does. And so I'm finished with the chair for now. I no longer need the chair, and I'm going to ask Diana to just go ahead and pull it back up out of the way. But you'll notice, as Marcy had already mentioned, look at this. We just take our hands. I take my hands to my low back. My legs are nice and fired up. I'm not rounded. Right? I want to get some nice extensioning in this pose. You want to lengthen the spinal column. You want to rehydrate all the discs in between the vertebrae and keep the big toes grounded, right? And you could bring in a little bit of action by straightening out the legs, slightly bending them. Watch that the knees don't go in towards each other. Always keep your joints in a nice, safe place. Any variations you'd like to do, Marcy? Well, I just wanted to mention that if you straighten your legs all the way, 
chances are, if your hamstrings are not loose, you're going to have a rounding in your back. So bending right. the knees is really desirable to get this nice length in the back. Watch what happens when I straighten my legs, my back rounds. Right. So I have a little bit of bend in, and then I get it more pliable. Then what's really nice, it challenges your... Um, your coordination and your balance, we walk the feet together so the big toes touch, the ankles are slightly away from each other. So before, when my feet were wide, it was really easy and stable. Now they're together and my body has, um, it wants to lean from one side to the other. So this here, I can even... Shows you where your weakness is. It. it does, and I could put my hands on my shin bones and lengthen out again a little bit more, but I feel a nice stretch in the back of the IT bands. Watch that you don't hyperextend. Right? And the same thing, I can take my hands, interlace them, and slowly fold forward. When you're learning to bend, never overdo it. Right? Always find your way gently. And so here we come up, nice and easy. And the first thing you'll feel is this rejuvenation. You feel so nice and blood in your head. Blood yeah. in your head, exactly. So maybe what I'm going to do here is just take the band about two or three inches above the knees and I'm going to walk my feet slightly back. You can see I grab the edges of the band like this. So my hips are slightly forward. My ankles are about an inch and a half away from each other and I want to open up the front side of the body. So we did a lot of stuff with the back side of the body. Then we open up the fascia and here I'll take my arms back one up and then the other and all I'm doing here is just changing my center of gravity. Without the mighty body band I would not be able to sustain this pose. The head could come back or it could even come down like that and work your little fingers up and slightly to the wall behind you and of course whatever Marcy would like and to the add. The longer lever is harder so if this feels any in your low back modify right right so it doesn't have to be the longest lever you could never stand like this on your own you'd fall right over so you Correct. really and then as i get more comfortable i sneak my feet back a little and i can get a little bit deeper but maybe that isn't where you need to go so you mm -hmm. figure it out and you work on your relationship right exactly so very nice and then i think maybe what we'll do while we have this connected before we come into the core poses we'll just get we got some nice side body stuff we just want to work a lot of the diagonal lines right the tendinous muscles that run through the front and the back side of the body so while we have this here i like to come up on my toes and then I like to lean slightly forward put my hands on my knees and just kind of get a little movement into my low back I extend my arms out up on my fingertips and then I take the outside of the feet down I take the left hand and I make a tripod right and with the tripod then my left hand is out in front and my right hand comes behind and it grabs the back of the calf muscle or even slightly above the knee right grab the back of the the thigh just and don't then back, grab your knee just Above don't grab the knee exactly and look at this and you work deeply into the pose it feels so nice and rejuvenating take a nice deep breath watch not to buckle up make sure you keep the crown of the head lined up with the tip of the tailbone and then I'll slowly switch it out opposite side and slowly oh that feels so nice Lengthening up and out, shoulder blade pulling back and down nice and easy, and then slowly. And you can do this as many times as you'd like. We're slowly going to come back up nice and easy. Well I like done. to bend my knees and use the band to help me up. Right. That feels so nice. Let's just erase the, the, the memory of those poses, and then we're going to begin with a nice warrior pose, right? So would you like to walk us through this one? We'll do warrior one first. Absolutely. So you just want to make sure that the hip extender is right. The, the loop is right on your hip bones here. Mm -hmm. And again, you'll be familiar with how the anchor, so I know, because I've done this before, the anchor is right in the middle. But you can look up and you're going to feel it. So I know right away. I'm going to start leaning to the right, so I have to counter that. I have a little bit of width with my feet. So my left heel is pressing down. We get a nice stretch to that calf. Very nice. And then I'm going to take my hip bones like they're headlights of a car, tilt them up so I don't have too much arch in my low back here. Right? I really want to stay strong in my core. And the same thing idea here is you can reach your hands out to the side. 
You can reach them up over the head. I like the one where you put them right in the loop here. You just open up and press and use the resistance. So that's a really nice one too. So what feels good is what you want to do. And I know I'm leaning, so I want to really make sure that I'm grounded and not leaning. Yeah, isn't that a nice one? Mm, I love that one. So nice. Right, so I notice oh, I'm into my left. I have to put more energy into my right foot. Good, all right, so let's grab the belt and kind of push ourselves away so we can get to the other side. And I draw that right hip forward. All right, on this side, I'm not as wobbly. Hip bones came up, ground that right heel. All right, maybe the hands start shoulder height. Maybe they reach up over the head. You're gonna decide what feels good for you. You want to challenge yourself, but you don't want to get into that uncomfortable zone. You know what's so nice about this, Marcy, is that it's like I've been doing yoga for 25 years and cross-training fitness, Pilates, and it's just so nice because I've got these parameters. There's like these resistant points that allow me, like my hips cannot go any further. So I kind of activate the legs and it helps me to get the extension in. And it's so, so stabilizing. Deeper, so much but deeper. But in a safe way. In a safe way, exactly. Very nice. Beautiful. So do you want to introduce Warrior 2 yeah. next? Yeah, let's take Warrior 2. So the same thing, as you do this, you'll learn to like just pull yourself up and out of it nice and easy. And then for Warrior 2, what we'll do is, notice before when our hips were nice and squared, right? Facing forward. So now what we do is we have this little slider and we put the slider um, wherever the contact is with the body, mighty body band light. So there's more contact here in the front and the slider is right there. Now here, I can adjust my back leg. You can see how tight this is. This is tight because this back leg is really firmly pressing down and my femur bone is turning internally and so should yours be. The knee is aligned above the ankle in front and this is a nice psoas opener as well. And I get the extension and the arms come out beautiful. And then the idea is to drop into that left hip, the one in front. I can even rest my hand on top of the band and back. Or conversely, I can take my hand underneath it. So it's on top, underneath it, and press slightly down. And as I press up into the band, I should say, it helps to pull my right shoulder blade back and down and I get some extensioning through nice. this left arm. It's very nice. I'm Leaning into this, leaning so I in. really have this whole sense of connection. Right? And That's then I right. can go a little bit deeper with my legs because I know that I'm not going to fall over. And then, as a nice variation, while you're in this side too, you can take your right hand inside the loop or on the outside of it and then just kind of open up the heart. So here, I press my back arm in and my elbow pushes the band away. And it really allows me to open up. And then I take the arm down nice and easy. Over time, you'll learn to reposition the foot and then brup, pull yourself slightly back up. And we pivot in place to the opposite side. Again, my tab slider is in a nice place. Look at this, my, my leg is up off of the floor in front, right? Because that back leg is really nice and stable. And then I try to get the sit bones nice and grounded and level and level. And then, how does that look, Marcy? That looks great. Come on in. Nice angle of your arm femur. out. And again, I can push. Look at when I push slightly down to engage this back arm. So you can stay relaxed or I can stay engaged. Whatever you want. I can put I it like underneath. Pull it under. I love how that really yes. pulls my left shoulder down. Really engages. And even the groin in the right side feels really nice. It's a nice challenge. That back leg, you can see me straighten it out, pulling the arms around. Be organic. Play around. Change things in the pose. See what you feel. Well, I'm Very the nice. And then so the good. reverse. That's breathing. I notice how that elbow pushes in there. It gives me more resistance. I have more room to move because I have the stability. Mm -hmm. And then why don't we come right into Parshvaknasana. So this we call the side angle pose. While we're in it, we're getting a little bit extensioning and then the left arm comes up. 
pull the shoulder blade back and allow your body to really relax into the front of the mighty body band light loop. Breathe so nice. in. I take my left hand on top of my God. left rib cage and just really, it's the same idea of stacking the ribs over the ribs. Yes. And then we will slowly and safely come on out and do the opposite side. And don't you really feel the difference in that one that leg versus so the other? Good. And sort of taking it right in. Beautiful. And you'll notice too in your manual, as we alluded to, you know, you'll see that we're doing all the poses inside the user guide, the manual for the Mighty Body Band Light. And then we've added a nice sprinklings in between as well. So again, I'm ready to take it down and then work in. And what's nice here is even this, I can sort of lean right to the left and really find my center of gravity and then fingertips stretch away from that left elbow. Shoulder blade pulls back and down. Big toe grounded in front. Become victorious in this pose. Exhale, work from the core. Pull that navel back, pull it back. Work that right femur bone from the leg and back of you, behind you. Anything you'd like to add, Marcy? Yes, if you feel like you want a little more challenge, take the elbow off the knee and reach on back. All right, you still have the support of the band, but now it's more core. It's very nice. Right, you could actually play around. Yep. Get a little fluidity going. Very nice, right, Mercy. So the idea is we're taking the manual and we're the sprinklings, right? Correct. A little extra sprinkle. Nice. Right. And then, beautiful. And then we have one more to do here before we go into the next pose. So the last one and with the loop here is we come down and this is where sometimes at home you may want to use a blanket on your mat but I like to take the calf muscles and pull them to the side and you'll notice you can put a piece of paper in between the glutes or my hips and my heels and they move around freely so I'm never fully collapsed into the knees. I don't have to worry about overdoing it and then I set the band and slightly above the sit bones. And this is really nice because the legs were working so hard. This will really take oxygen and blood deeper into the knees. It's very therapeutic. Helps to eliminate a lot of the toxins that build up into the knees. And even your walks become more enjoyable. <laughs> Slowly. And you can come back easy. Never come back too far. Always know where you're at. Right? Put your hands behind you. Drop and down. If you can get here, it's really important that it's, if you can See my little tailbone mm -hmm. tuck? Otherwise, you'll put too much pressure into that low back. That's right. So, what I've done is my front hips, as if they're headlights of a car, tilt them up, mm -hmm. and then get into the front thigh. Very nice. And then before we do another sprinkling here is we'll turn around and do one child's pose. And what we'll do is come slightly forward. So the knees come forward as the hips drop down. You'll see the tension on the band. So the idea is not to come up like this, but to keep the knees forward and let the hips come down as far as possible. Then you'll see, this is so tight, this band. The band is pulling me this way. The weight of my body is coming forward, so it picks up with the traction in where we left off before. See how he's not totally sitting on his heels. We're in a child's pose without the band, you would be. Yes. So it gives you that nice lift. It feels really so good. Defy gravity. Oh, it feels so good. And after all that standing work, it's just so nice to relax the nervous system before going into the next part of, of what we're doing. Very nice. What do you think, Marcia? Should we come out? No, but well, <laughs> that we should. <laughs> so now we're going to come on out of child's pose, nice and easy, and then slowly. Good. So let's come on out of this and we'll go on to the next one. So we're going to tighten it up. Good. All right, you can go ahead to the next one. Great. And then what we're going to do is just come to the front of the mat and you'll do the same. I mean, you'll just come into Tadasana and I'll just sort of close the eyes nice and easy and make sure that everything is right on par. We have all these different feedback loops in the body, the brain talking with the body. And you'll know, okay, I'm ready for this next part. Good. So we're observing without judging. That's right. 
and then we'll take it into the next place. So we're gonna come on back and we're gonna work the legs a little bit deeper with the hamstrings here. So you'll come right back into your loop, place it up over the head, and what we do now is we take the right leg forward and the left hip back. Now, when I put the band on, rather than keeping it level, if my right leg is forward, I lift that left side of the band up slightly. And that just allows me to go a little bit deeper into the pose. So already, and I've really warmed up the muscles in a very nice way, I start to feel it into the hamstrings and into the adductors. Now, if you're ready, you, you wanna make sure you walk your right foot out so you can really feel that in the hamstrings, but that you're not hyperextended into your knee. So keep the quad active. And here you can even, if you feel, again, you can have a chair that you can use or you can take your arms out. You can do this, but as you hold the pose and that back leg is victorious and nice and firm, you really start to feel that in the hamstring. There's no way that you can do this pose and not quite feel that. The key <laughs> is to keep the symmetry. And that's right, and Marcy's got her hands down because that gives her a little bit of control. She can lift them up, down, and play around with it nice and easy. I'm pretty flexible in this pose, so my hamstrings are really open. I've been using the band for a long time. My big toe is really nice and great. I try to work the right hip back. I can even take my hands behind me, interlace them, right? And then exhale, I fold forward. I really start to feel that stretch deep into it. And, and I it's do that internal rotation. I take my hands and I just rotate mm -hmm. so I can really coax that right. sacrum to open up. Very nice. And you can play around with this. You can play around with this. If you want to, you know, just do it a little bit longer, go ahead and do it a little bit longer. But otherwise, right, you pull your leg back, nice and easy. And then if there's any buckling in your mat, you know, you'll look from time to time and take it out. And then the other leg is forward. And then, mercy, maybe you want to work them through this side. So find that nice connection of the belt. Like I said, it might be a little bit on an angle, so you have some more open. Right, and then here we go. You know right now you're engaged. Right, lift that foot up. So I take my hands, I like to internally rotate. Big toe down. On my inhale, I get my extension. On my exhale, my exertion. You could grab opposite elbows here and frame the face. Lifting up those shoulders and relaxing the neck. Right, you could have some Motion. Good. A nice big sweeping motion of the hands and open up. And maybe we'll take them into a twist. What do you think, Marcy? All right, so we're gonna reach the arms up. I'm gonna press my right hip forward and my left hip back, my left foot's in front. And then I'm just gonna gently set my hand on my shin here or take the palm open. And I'm using that to find the resistance. The left hand can just ruin the low back Pressing the right hip forward, find that connection. Then if you're okay, the left arm can reach up. And by okay, I mean your low back gives you the green light. And then finally, from here, I like to take the right hand off and reach it. So no hands. And it looks easy. Oh, this is a challenge, not. I yes. just started sweating a little more. All right, right. Slowly, let's do the twist on the other side. All right, love this one. One of my favorite poses, so challenging. A lot of times in class I'll have someone come around and say, okay, now that you're in a pose, lift the leg up and your body shouldn't feel like it's going to fall over from the right or left. Then you know you've got it just right. And then let Marcy walk you through the other side. All right, I'm gonna get some length this time reaching up. Again, if this doesn't feel good on your back, modify the levers. I'm thinking about internally rotating my thighs and then I'm gonna add my twist. Left hand slides down. I start with my right hand and my low back. And then I add the twist, right? So I create my inhale, the length, and then I twist on the exhale. Maybe my arm comes up. Lots of options here. Maybe that left hand reaches up. And again, if you wanted some fluidity, you could inhale, exhale, exhale. Right, mm -hmm. so once you get into it, the heat producing, right, by adding a little bit of 
slow. <sighs> Very nice. I'm ready for a forward bend. That would feel good. So this is a fun forward bend, unlike any forward bend you will have ever done. So what we're going to do is this band, it lengthens. You could make the loop larger in diameter, smaller. We're going to lengthen it all the way so that it's a large loop. And then we're going to take all of the slack out of the band. So the band is fully lengthened. And then what we do is we come back and place the band up over the shoulder. For me, I'm right-handed, I place it over the right shoulder. And so it comes back like this. And then, now notice when I came in, I didn't come into the loop, I just place it in the back. And then I start to back up and I find the loop. That's really important. Yep, and then he here's the loop. And I slowly make sure all the twists are out. I take my slider if I want, and I place it so that it would never fall off. And then here, I walk my feet forward. And what's really nice is I can go from one side to the other, never losing control. You wouldn't want to fall over to the side with this, just to get some movement and then extensioning and then folding forward. It's really nice. You could even take your hands behind you. And I'm pretty open in this pose. I make it look simple, but you know, there's all kinds of variations. It should be just right for your body. Good. I do these nice pulsations. We have Beautiful. some of my students that we just kind of bend mm -hmm. over and sneak in. Or you can bend and put it here. It's confusing to get in, but once you can find that. Mm-hmm. And moving your hands behind your calf muscles like this is really nice. And of course, later on, when you really start to master these things, you know, there's a ton of different things you do. You put your hands on, and you come into crow, and it helps support you. We don't recommend this right now, but with the end in mind, you know, it's really very nice. As long as you have healthy wrists, and you're strong enough to come into it, beautiful without causing any ill tensioning into the body. And to come on out, watch this, it's really fun. You just kind of lean forward and you twist out to the right or to the left. And that's the pose, very nice. I think we should do high lunge. And let's do single leg high lunge. Single leg high lunge it is. Wow, we've got it in single so loop it's mode. on the floor. I'm just gonna step in with my uh, okay. left leg. All right. Oh, I flip it around Good. and make sure I have a nice connection. I'll probably pull it up maybe halfway. What do you think, Marcy? That's a good idea. So we'll take it up halfway and let Marcy walk us through this Yeah, one. I just wanted to swing it around so I could get this on my leg so okay. that it kind of stabilizes it. So I notice yours is a little higher and mine is mid. I, I like to put mine mid. How about, what do I you like, like you do? Higher. Okay, good. So there you go. You know, there's different places that, that really work. And good. So this is similar to the warrior one pose with the hips both facing forward. But we're on, right, I'm on the top of my foot here so my heel's lifted, okay? My front leg is bent. Take my hip bones up. I like to just kind of feel into mm -hmm. it so I get a little lift and lower. And I find that place where it feels like it's giving me the lift I want, right. but I can push into it. All right, now I'm gonna reach my arms up. Draw the shoulders away. Mm. Oh, this is so different than when we were in it with the um, loop around the front of the hips, right? With, yeah, as opposed to just one leg in it. It really allows you to work that right hip back and open up into that left hip flexor. Open up, right. Yeah. So, yeah, that's good. Really nice. And then you could reach forward from here, but I'm pushing the heel back. Yeah, it's, it's nice. Really nice stretch into that front. Oh yeah, you can feel screen. that. Beautiful. Uh, and come on up. Nice. And then if you wanted to, you could also add a nice twist here. So I like to push my leg away, hook the elbow in, plant the hand on top, mm. and I use my right hand to push down to get my left side body. Right, so it's really, really nice. want to find that. And it's a challenge. Like you can see, I'm moving to the right and to the left. It's a challenge to really maintain your sense of balance. You got to find that stability by yep. using your ah, core. Yep. All right. Very nice. Ooh, do you feel that in that right leg? Ooh, the left leg is jealous. Uh, All right, so make sure you step out of it. Don't try anything fancy. 
Yes, that's true. <laughs> and I have my slider. I think you're right. I like it a little higher. It's nice. Yep. I just feel like it gives me more support. Mm -hmm. And then once you get the connection, slide the leg back, draw the hip forward, take the arch out of the low back, and again, I the little pulses. And what's also nice, Mercy, is, you know, like when I lift up and I pull the band out to the right, as I start to drop into it, it gives me a nice internal rotation at the same time. Because mm, that in, really nice. inner band pulls it to where you want it. Yeah. Very nice. I'm going to lean forward, but I'm not collapsing onto my thigh. I'm still using my ab muscles, drawing the shoulders away. Yeah, definitely core. Leaning forward, pressing the heel back. Oh, that feels so good. That's challenging. Very challenging. I'm going to use my hand to support myself. Add my twist. The twist comes from the top of the hip all the way to the armpit. Make the hands in prayer. Push the top hand down to create that resistance, the push-pull. And then either you're going to look down at your left toe or over towards the horizon. Very nice. And the same thing here, once you get used to this feeling, if you wanted to add, right, the twist that we did before. So any of these combinations are nice. Very nice. All right, so I'm just doing my hands up here, keep them together, so I'm already ready to be efficient. I'm a big multitasker. It's very nice. Good. And release. Okay, so we're gonna Whoa. step out of yes. it. Ooh, not mm -hmm. Very nice. So what do you think, triangle? Triangle, yeah. So let's just place it up over the head. I'm going to give myself a little more length here. Uh, yes, me too. The more length you have, remember, the less intense the angle is. So here, Try what should we work? The left right forward? Yeah, let's do left let's forward. Do left forward. Now, I like to do this pose because I have the band around inside the body around my hips, I like to take my left foot slightly over to the right. So you can see it's actually in front of that back leg. And just keep that big toe grounded. It doesn't have to be too far up, but make sure, like as Marcy was mentioned earlier, it's like your front of your knees are like a headlamp on a, on a car. It's looking straight out in front, right? And here you get the extensioning. You'll place one hand down, and then slowly the other arm comes up. And you might have to walk that left foot a little bit more forward to create more tension in the band. Really important. So if you notice right here, I'm completely not using my band because I don't have any... Right, so if I walk forward a little, then right. I make my connection. I establish my connection. And one other thing with the legs on the wider base, you get to work the striations. So you're mm -hmm. working different muscles than you would just in a normal standing pose because you're on this beautiful angle. You're wringing out a sponge. Mm -hmm. I'm using my left hand on the inside of my shin to get that torque. And of course, one thing that's really nice to do in this pose is when you're ready towards the end, look slightly down and then let your head hang. It's a nice oh, way to nice release pose. the muscles in the side of the neck while that right shoulder on top is kind of pinning back and down. Beautiful release. Make sure you don't hyperextend in that left leg and then right slowly come on up. You can take the nice. It's very playful. There's so many different things that you can do and create into the band. What you end up doing is what feels good next. All right, very nice. Oh, very nice. And the other side. You see how I grab the band over time? You'll be in it and you'll just know how to grab it. Just boop, pull yourself straight up and out. And turn around, and again, when you're working, get this into the crease. So this band goes right into the crease of this right hip. Look at that, my leg is up. It holds me into place. I get this back leg really nice and positioned, and again, you don't want this knee and this leg turned out, so you keep that big toe grounded, right, Marcy? Yes. Nice and grounded, and then extensioning. So as much as you're getting extension into that left side of the torso, so as the right. Lengthen up and out. You can take your arms out like that if you want. Use your core, right? And then slowly your hand comes down. Keep the quad active. Your kneecap should never be loose, like jello. Nice and firm. 
pull that left shoulder blade back and down. Keep that right big toe grounded. Close your eyes, feel the beauty. And the big toe grounding really helps you to engage that quad to the femur. Sure does. Ah. If you wanted to, you could also slide a Whoops. block right there. Nice block in between. It's most exhilarating. And of course, you can come up and do all these different things. There's a ton of different variations. So this is different than what I showed you the first time, right? I'm just showing that you can do all these different variations. I can take my leg, my arm back, grab the band from behind, and take it up that way, and it really engages my right that shoulder so here. Nice when you grab it here. Yep, pulling it back, it engaging the toe. To get you stacked up. And then bend the legs and walk, jump, step forward. Beautiful. So. Now, we're going to just do one forward bend before we come into a nice pose which really addresses the piriformis, the gluteus medius. So maybe we'll do one more forward bend. Notice the difference in this forward bend, right? Versus the one that we did before where we were leaning the opposite way. How are you feeling, Marcy? The difference if I'm back here, I don't have anything going on. It's just a regular forward fold. But right. then I lean forward. And it's really nice. It really gives you that lift up so that you can sink in. Yeah, and stay there for a minute, Marcy, because yeah. that's a really good point for while Marcy's in the pose is that a lot of the reasoning behind the Mighty Body Band is because Marcy would not normally be able to do a pose like this in the absence of the band. But because she does have the band, she's actually working very different parts of the muscle, um, parts of it that she normally would never work. And that's the beauty as we start to create new what they call slings within the muscle itself to give us a lot more support. Beautiful. Nice. And shall we do what I like to call the number four pose, and some people call it the pigeon pose. It's really a nice pose, and we're going to show you, we're going to actually introduce our PNF loop, and realize that we could have introduced the PNF loop in the very beginning. You can use it in every pose for the most part. So what we'll do is we'll do it statically, and then we'll introduce it, yeah? Okay. All right, so what we want to do here is we just want to go ahead and lengthen, take all the slack out of your toe band, right? And then what we're going to do is, what's nice, even when you go to sit down, is you can lean back and then just slowly come down like this, as long as your feet aren't going to slide out in front of you. Now, if you'll notice my mat, because a lot of times the pressure, you're working against the wall, and you want to watch that if you see your mat kind of sliding a little bit, um, just keep it nice and straight. Why is that? Because it's an indication if your mat is crumbling, mm -hmm. you might follow next. So yep, that's right. Make sure. So we come down. Safe. Yep, exactly. Safety first. So we come down in a nice, safe way. And then what we do is we take the slide tabber, make sure all the hardware is out of the way. So you can see I can slide it up out of the way. In other words, you wouldn't want to do the pose like that with this hardware. So the band was designed so that all the hardware can be moved out of the way to do your work. And this is nice. So here, I want to be able to sit in between the sit bones and the sacrum. So I'm not flat on the sit bones like this, but slightly in back of them. Okay, and the sit bones are in front of me. And then this band here is right around the midsection of my spine. And then what I do is I extend my left leg out and I cross my right leg over. Then, if I'm able, I can but, but, but take... First, you have to mention that that might be enough of a stretch right there. It might be. Okay. Yep. <laughs> so you'll take yourself into it, and you'll make sure that you can really keep your... In this case, my right leg is bent up over the left. So I want to make sure that my foot is flexed, and I want to make sure that the right knee, in this case, isn't coming towards my right shoulder. So... But flexing the foot is so important. Yes, it is. Because first, you don't want to sickle your ankle and put mm -hmm. pressure on your ankle, and you want to protect your knee. Yes. Your body will look for the easy way out, which is going to be not flexing. So you really want to make sure that's all happening. Yep. 
And then once you get it all in there, if you feel like you don't have a stretch, then you can scooch back and bring the foot in. And the stretch is right behind that right tushy in your piriform. Ooh, you feel it. Ooh. And never push your knee, but, but you can just gently, you can put your hand in front of the knee and you can even press the knee in towards the arm. So my arm is in front of, on the side of the front of the knee like this, and I actually press it in and you can feel that deeper release into the hip rotators piriformis, gluteus medius, all these different muscles that are buried nice. into the I hips. I put my fingers in a teepee, so my hand's next to my foot, other hand's on my knee, it really like, keeps me honest. I could even lean back like this a little bit and open up the heart, my elbows bend back. This is so glorious, it feels so nice. Just like that, it's a heart opener at the same time. I take my arms back up, back down. Now what's really important, and you probably can see Marcy better than me, but the thing is when you come out it's supposed to never try to just take that leg out. You've got to stabilize two hands out in front of you. Walk your foot, the le in this case the left leg, and take the load off that right knee, the leg that was bent over. And when you just relax, you can feel such an intense difference between the two sides. Oh my, absolutely. Again, start out low, so take your right foot out so that your knee is further away from the front of your torso, and then go ahead. Now for most people that are right-handed, automatically it seems to be that the left side is much tighter than the right. Not always, but so here, I take the foot back, and I could even lift my hips up and scoot myself in. I'm not nearly as open as I am on my right side, so I'm not gonna overdo it, as you mentioned, Marcy. And the same thing, I don't want to push my knee down, but I want to see if I can stabilize the leg, press the knee into the hand. If you press this left knee into the left hand, it will take the femur bone into the hip socket in a more succinct, therapeutic way. And keep that foot flex, breathe, and then after a while, your muscle adapts. Right? They call it creeping. The muscle creeps to adapt to the pose. Sort of like a floor that creeps, right? You hear the sounds and it just adapts. And the same thing. You can bend here, heart opener, inhaling up. That's it. Beautiful. And you can stay here as long as you want. And the same thing, you'll just walk that right foot out, take the load tension off, and very nice. You can even fold your legs over. You can lower this a little bit if you'd like, and come back nice and easy and just relax the legs. And that feels really nice too. So there's all kinds of different organic things that you can do with the band, right? Very nice. Take your hands out, watch your low back, and slowly come on up. Just want me to get the loops. Very first. nice. So yeah, now we're gonna come on out and we will introduce the PNF loop. So that was nice. I can stay here and I can help pull myself up. And then what I wanna do is take the band and retract it, the toe band, all the way. Now I'm going to just take the PNF loop off of our the wall here, and I'm gonna hold it up. And this is the PNF loop, and it's static right now, because you can see this is one static line, but this also comes apart, and then it stretches like a rubber band. It's a bungee cord. So I'm going to put it back up static, the way I got it, like that. And then what I'll do is I will take the loop portion off of the toe band, and then I will reconnect the PNF loop to the toe band, and then reconnect the loop of the mighty body band, okay? Very nice. Now, the same thing, just to give you an example, I can come back into the loop, and I can extend it halfway, and come back, and you can see as I lean into it, it doesn't stretch like a rubber band, because it's, even though it's a PNF loop, it's hooked up statically, right? It's just like it was before, there's no difference. So, when you get the accessory, you can leave it hooked up all the time. There's no reason to take it off, because when you want to use it, what you'll do is you'll put the band around your shoulder, and then Marcy will back up just a little bit, and then again the loop comes off. So connected, disconnected, and then I'm going to tighten, I'm going to take some of the slack out, because now that the PNF loop is there, and look at the difference now. Now, 
you can see the bungee cord in action. There's all these elastic properties into the band that now allows me to do all these other poses. You forgot to hear the best mm -hmm. sound effects that go with the PNF. That's right. It feels really nice. While we got it, let's just come into a down dog. Now, the thing about the down dog is this, is now that you know you've got the bungee cord, right, if I go too far, my feet will go sliding behind me. So I've got to really have a nice stable foundation, especially when you're working with the PNF loop. And then here, I can come on in and it kind of holds me up. And if it doesn't, I walk my feet more forward. And then here, I can take my hands down, walk my feet back, and watch this. Exhale, and push yourself forward. Exhale, pull the hands forward. And it's like you're working in these modified down dogs and you're really working so many more muscle groups concurrently at the same time. So I just that mentioned that... Whenever the band expands is when you exhale. When the band yes. contracts is the inhale. That's right. Very important to make sure when it's being stretched, it's on the exhalation. And it's fun. It feels really nice. And I still have my hands up. And I know that, you know, my body weight relative to my angle is nice and stable. And I'm not going to go crashing down. And then slowly here, I can nice and easy come on up. And again, the band holds me into place. It's very nice. Forward and backwards, right? And earlier we showed you a couple things that, you know, some nice side body bends. And you can do the same thing here with this. Just as an example, let's say you wanted to get a little bit more of a body stretch here. So before, without the PNF loop, we were static, which was fine. And we worked this way. Now... Mm -hmm. work really deeply. And of course, because we'll do it in one side, we'll definitely get to do the other. Maybe two more times, and it feels really nice. And you can open up your legs to increase it, and then the opposite side. Beautiful. Open them up. And in the manual, you know, it'll show you all the poses that you can do with and without the PNF. Like that. And notice as my hips come forward, my hand goes this way. So it's so much more dynamic in the stretch. Right? Beautiful. I was demonstrating what was in the book if they looked at it. Uh -huh. Nice. Beautiful. But you have to be in charge here, because the band will help you, but you mm -hmm. have to be in charge. Correct. You can get deeper into poses, you work different muscles. So mm -hmm. if, if down dog is limiting for you, because it hurts your hands, you can't stay there for a long time, now you take that out of the you equation. You take the pressure off the wrist. Yep. So much deeper into everything. Yeah, great for people with carpal tunnel. For this next pose, Marcy, let's show them the, um, we'll show them the, um, and the push-up position. So the push-up is really nice. But we're going to show it to you statically first. So we're going to take the bungee cord element out of it. We're going to reconnect into what we call static mode here. And then we want to lengthen it maybe about a quarter of the way, one-third of the way. And then what happens is I come forward, and then I come down to my knees. And on my knees, then what happens is I take the feet all the way back to the wall. Now, for me, it's actually a little bit too long. So I'm going to come out of it, and I'm going to and shorten it up. just right. So I come forward, exactly, there we are, that's really nice. So, what's nice about this is you can see my arms come up. I, I can take them up and I can come in and hold this. I can lower myself down, push myself up. I can come down, take the hands back, all kinds of different things that you can do here, right? A lot of nice core work, right? Even when you come up, right? Engage the core, and it feels really good. I can take my hands back like this and come into a nice cobra-like pose. Or you can do it with the hands down here. Or the hands down. Beautiful. Now what's really nice is we're going to walk our feet forward, come on out of it, place the band around the shoulders, and then we're going to disconnect the static strips of the PNF loop is engaged. Now, in this pose here, you may have to shorten your loop. You just made an adjustment. Yes, right? you have tightened it up all the way. Exactly right. And then the second adjustment is here. You want to take your PNF loop so when you're standing, maybe back against your door, or in this case the wall, it comes slightly beneath the knees like that. If it's way up here, right, you'll have to lengthen, make your loop larger. So what's going to happen? So we know it's bungee now, right? We know it's holding me up. 
but what's going to happen is this. I come back on all fours, and um, as soon as I come down on all fours, I should feel this band tightening up on me, okay? And so here, now, rather than it being static, I couldn't go anywhere. I couldn't do this if it was static. Wouldn't, wouldn't work. Static means it just goes that far, and that's it. So here, I drop down to the tip of my nose. I take my hands back, and then I push up. So the bungee cord helps lower me so I don't collapse and fall on my face, and it helps to pull me up. And so the idea is we build up confidence, we build up strength, we build up flexibility in just the right places. And then, you know, this, this is an advanced thing, but over time it becomes so easy, you just you clap. Because the band allows me to do this stuff, and it builds up nice arm strength as well. So that's what we do with that. Really, really very nice. And of course, many other things. You can walk forward and come up on your toes and, and do these nice pelvic tilts, right? They call these cat-cow poses. But it's really nice because now I've got this bungee cord that I'm working with, but really against. Right? Because it pulls my hips back. And then when I come forward, I have to pull it forward. Bungee pulls the hips back. I pull the bungee forward. Beautiful. Like you can do all these other things. Your abs. Yep, that's right. You're using your abs. Right. right? Balancing. Nice. Beautiful. Right? Well done. I like to add a little pulse. Uh-huh. Right. Yep. As long as you have the PNF. Use it. Again, as you're stretching it, exhale, right? Very nice. Very nice. Good. How about we come into one child's pose, relaxing into it, softening the nervous system. If you find, you know, that your nervous system is really wired up, relax into child's pose. It's all good. Very nice. And then slowly what we'll do is we'll start to come on up nice and easy. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll actually come into a nice heart opener. So from here, we're going to hook it up statically, just like this. So we still have the PNF hooked up. And then what I do is I walk my feet into the door, into the wall, and then I place this just right, and the arms come back, right? And I could even drop down, take the knees in, open up like that. <sighs> Inhale, exhale, <sighs> right? Easy. If that's too much, sometimes we even use weights. can mix in all kinds of different things. Beautiful. And then we're going to slowly come on up. So we're going to come back to the bungee cord in a minute. But we're going to actually take it back off. So I'm going to unhook the bottom one first. Let this hang. And then take it off the toe band. I'm going to just put it on the peg and then put the handles back on. And then what I do is I reconnect my toe band to the Mighty Body Band loop. So what I'm going to do in this next pose is I'm going to... Let's see, you'll come in with me. You'll get yourself in. Notice what I'm doing on the sides. There's no twists in this. And I also want to make sure my mat right, isn't bunching up. And then... If you're walking forward, again, like this, you want the band to be slightly beneath your knee, so I can feel right about there, slightly beneath the back of my knees, all right? And then what's gonna happen is this. I'm gonna hold on nice and firmly to my toe band, and then I'm going to very carefully walk one foot against the wall and then the other. Now, you can always have a chair with you as well, which in a picture it will show a chair that you lower yourself down. But here, the legs are open. Opened, nice and easy. You got that, Marcy? I just didn't know if you wanted me to get you a chair. Yeah, oh no, that's fine. So we'll come in and we'll do it together. 
Now, the thing about this is, Marcy may have to emulate this as well. The back foot, you can actually stay up on the toes like this, or you could do this. You should turn that back leg so it feels comfortable and then that knee is never in torsion, right? So for me, because for the first variation, what I want to do is this. I'm going to keep my one foot sort of halfway on the floor and halfway on the wall, the one that's in back of me. And then all I do here is I drop down. And this is a nice side body stretch, which is going to prepare me for the next pose to follow. So I come up, exhale down. It feels really nice. I can exhale down and open up the chest. <sighs> right? I could even come in like this, up, down, right? Nice and easy. And then I'll sort of come on out. And what's nice is look at how the band turns right in place with me. The band turns right in place. And I feel the buckles in the way. I'm going to move them out of the way. And the same thing. So here, that's right. Open up. And then, so Marcy, when you have your right leg, so Marcy's um, bottom leg is forward, my top leg is forward, and it feels awkward to me, which is why in the other side I said to you, bottom leg forward, no, you've got it right, Marcy. Yes, and then top leg back, because it just feels more intuitive, and you drop down, and I have many more restrictions on this side, and you may as well, or maybe you're tighter on the other side, but slowly, exhale, drop down, push yourself up, never a strain, right? And Marcy taking it a little bit deeper, right? Good. And then what we're going to do from here is this really nice pose called threading the needle. So we take the arm up and then slowly drop down. And it's nice because this band turns with me and it accommodates my opening. And then you'll see it slide into place up here and it goes back down. And this is where that back foot behind you may pivot up and back down. When you come up, my heel touches the floor. When I come down, it slides back up. Very nice. And when you come out of this pose, you can just come onto your knees, and then we'll do the other side. So we'll get ourselves into positioning. Beautiful. And then slowly when you're ready, right? Again, you'll drop down. And then the twist, right? So here, nice and easy. Good. Yep. It feels nice when she Very nice. it up the first time. It does. And you know, it's interesting because when you do these twists, like I can still switch it out. I can actually switch my legs out just to feel how different it really is. And it's a little bit, it's a, some, some people say, oh, it's much harder. Some people say they feel different muscles opening up. It's just that you can see how it turns with me like that. It's different. <sighs> That's it, beautiful. And then from here, I'm gonna take my knees down nice and easy and come slightly forward. And this is like a, in yoga, they call this a poppy pose. It's like the hips are up, arms out in front, and breathe. And then we'll move on to the next part. So we're gonna track our hands back. Now what's going to happen is we're going to go back to double loop mode. But how we're going to do this is a little different than double loop mode with the handles, which is what we started out with. So the first thing I want to do is I want to lengthen my toe band all the way. And then I'm going to move this over just a little bit so it's not in the way of showing how to do this. So we have two female buckles, right? And then we have these male ends that make the two loops, okay? So I hold the two female buckles together and I'm going to place it in between my legs. Now, I hold the two female buckles in between my legs and then I take the male end and I make my first loop. This loop is wrapped around my right thigh. And then what I do is I take the other, I find my Nail. I move all the hardware out of the way and then I take all the slack 
out of both of the loops. And I sometimes have to use my palm so that when I go to tighten this up, right, you can see it starts to get tight. So both of them are nice and tight, like that. And you can see there's two loops running around each leg. Beautiful. They're high up, nice and easy. And again, it's always as if you can get just a little bit more to tighten it up. The tighter they are, or the more snug they are, the more it rotates the thighs and the femur bones internally. Now, I'm going to walk slightly forward, and it shouldn't come up to the pelvic floor. You want to hold the front down just a little bit, and watch me so maybe you'll zoom in just a little bit and you'll see how these two loops rotate my thighs internally. So now I'm going to come slightly forward. I get this nice internal rotation. Well, I know I have my chair here, so I'm going to take my chair and I lower myself down. And what's nice about having a chair here is that my femur bones are working behind me my thighs are rotating internally, and it's a really nice release again for the piriformis, right? You can see from the side angle, Good. this is just giving us all this nice support here. How does that yep. feel in your little bit? Feels back? great. Feels really nice. And now I have no arms here, right? My arms are in back. I'm just being held up by the mighty body band light and my two legs. And then the same thing. I can, if I feel nice, I can then, if I don't need to, no longer need to chair, I can put it to the side, and then, right, I could even do all these other variations that I was doing earlier, twists and things like that, and take my hands to my hips and slowly come on up, and then what I can do, I push this down just a little bit, and I come slightly forward, and I walk my feet back. Now, we know I would not be able to hold this pose were I not connected to the mighty body band. And I take my arms up, and then here, now, I come I back. Now, I switched mine around, so right. I have the same idea here. Oh, very nice. And what's nice about this pose is the more I work back, normally when you go into back bend, your legs open up and it pinches the sacrum. This keeps the thighs rotating internally, so it always keeps the sacrum really nice and open. It's a beautiful pose. And then it's so simple to come on out of. You just snap one and then the other, and that's that. And while I've got this in double loop mode, I'm going to reconnect the two loops like this. And in the beginning, you might play around and get a feel for it, but you want it to be a pretty open double loop. You'll put the arm of one, put one arm through one loop and then the other, and you'll take this up like that, try to take the twists up out of it, and then, now if it feels too restrictive, that just means you have to make your loops a little bit larger. And that's it. Just like that, it pulls the shoulder blades back and down nice and easy. My body's leaning forward, really nice for cervical extensioning. Big toes are grounded, right? Good, that's it. I'm play around nice and easy. On set, good. Very nice. Sometimes when you're coming out, you could even take it to the elbows, closer to the elbows, and it takes the tension off the shoulders and working it. it to it that way. Exactly. Very nice. Breathe in. Good. And then slowly my arms come back. I'm going to retract the unit nice and easy. And then maybe what I'll do is we take... We also hook the handles up and do that same variation here with the mm -hmm. double loop like we started. Mm -hmm. And we can do a little back bend. Yeah, we can do that. We can do it exactly, Marcy. So we'll both hook it up. Right. So what's nice about this is... This is not the extended handle mode, but this is the double loop handle mode. And so my wingspan is not as wide. A more control. I have a little bit more control, exactly, which is nice for what we're about to do. So make sure you have nice firm footing, and then pull up. 
very nice. And as long as you know your feet aren't going to slip behind you, it'll really open up very nicely yeah, and into there's it. There's so many things you can do. Yep, nice protraction of the shoulders, really nice stomach from the core. Her thighs are rotating internally. Very nice. Very nice, beautiful. And then of course we can get that nice counter pose like this. Beautiful, nice. And slowly come on up, easy. So let's come back into Tadasana, just to ground ourselves again. Nice and easy. We are going to show you a wonderful pose that can be performed, again, with or without the PNF loop. We're gonna do it with the PNF loop. We think it's a little bit more dynamic. If you're not using the PNF loop, you'll do the same thing, except it'll be more static, okay? So, we're already in our double loop handle mode. So, shorten mine up. we're gonna shorten, the, retract the toe band, and then we're going to take off, in this case, the double loop with handles, and take our PNF loop, connect the PNF loop to the toe band, and then reconnect the double loop handles. Good. We're then going to now, Separate, take off the um, static strip. Now it, the whole thing stretches again like a rubber band. Now this is really important to get. So you can see the two handles are just four or five inches, about four inches above the floor. I'd like them to be a little higher for me. So all I have to do is just shorten my two double loops. I just and to then mention. you'll see, let me just finish this one part here, then now you'll see, now rather than being four or five inches, they're actually about seven or eight inches off the floor. Go ahead, Mercy. Just where you're attaching these. So there's the floating triangle as mm -hmm. opposed to up here, which is the static triangle. Right, exactly. So yep. a little. Slides around on the webbing, exactly. So, all right. And then I think I'll let you walk us through this okay, one, Mercy. these are my favorite. Mm -hmm. <laughs> let me just get myself so I'm even. Okay. You're shortening them up a little bit. Good. This one needs a little more. Great. All and right. they so, level out. From here, those are going to work for me. Okay, good. I can make it work. Good. All right. So. I'm going to sit down first because it's safety first. And I'm going to slide my feet into the, the soft, handles. Soft the part soft of the webbing. Of the so there's a molded part of the handles and a soft webbing part, yes. Yes. Are you not going to do this with me? No, I'm going to go into it as soon as you go in and just point a couple things out. All right, yep. so the easiest way, once you get this on your feet, just one goes in front and so you can easily flip over. Okay, good. Now, I'm gonna start out with some nice abs. I'm gonna go on my forearms. I think it's a little more controlled. Certainly works your shoulders. When I come up here, I push the feet in and I lift up, I'm gonna soften my heart. So if you see, here's my tailbone tuck, my upper back came with it. I'm gonna warm that up. And then it's a simple, it's a simple move, but it's certainly not simply done. Miguel's gonna do it on his hands. So it depends. If you have wrist issues or you're working on your stability, building your strength, you're going to modify on the forearms. Mm -hmm. And you know, Mercy, I want to point out when I was just in mine, you know, sometimes the handles, you have to make sure that they're not twisted because I was in it, my handle was twisted and it just felt a little bit funny. So then I just take my leg back through and ah, it feels so much better. Okay, good. Are we piking? I was piking, and then um, maybe you can pike, and what I'm gonna do now is I'm actually gonna do some nice core stuff. So I actually fold my arms, we know this one, and I point my toes, and then I take a nice inhalation, and I hold it, and I can really feel the so core, everything working, and one release. One at a time, one foot at a time to make it a little easier. Well, you can do one, and I don't know, I find that harder myself. Really? Yeah, so okay. I like to use both, fire up both legs, and then back up. Good, give it a try, Marcy. What do you think? The head down on the 
really makes a difference. Yes, it does. Good. That's a little closer to the wall. Really so nice. A little more range of motion. Yeah, sure. I mean, that, that's the whole thing for more tension. You'd walk further away for less tension. You can just play around and do all kinds of different things. I can come down on my head like this and work into it that way. And back up. Nice and easy. And I know I'm never going to fall forward because I'm under tension. Very nice. I can come slightly forward. Marcy's still doing her thing. And I lift up like this. Really very nice. We're trying to be playful in this video, showing you that there's all kinds of different approaches. The Mighty Body Band is organic. It's dynamic. You can do all kinds of different things. Oh, Those are very nice. Nice and slow. I turn back around again. And because I've got all these pivots, I back up. And I can do, right? And one leg will want to come first because that's the kick leg. That's the one that fires up. And the key is to try to bring them both in together, right? All kinds of different things. I like the ones where you, uh, well, you could also use it to get yourself up into tripod headstand. Mm -hmm. Here is a good practice place. Mm -hmm. a good hair messer upper. Nice. Right, so I'm in my pike. <sighs> yep. Then I'm in my plank. Mm -hmm. Pike's a good place to start if eventually mm -hmm. you're going to play around with getting your feet up. Right? Right. Because you're safe. You don't have to worry about falling over. Um, the one I like on the back also. It's just real easy. Look how easy that is. a flip over. Yep. Just lay on your back, pull the mm -hmm. shoulders under, lift up here. Good. So similar, Miguel had his whole body off here. I'm resting on my shoulders. And I can take a little mm -hmm. out and in. That's a nice Pilates. Uh, yes, yeah, so all kinds right. of stuff you can do with this. Right. And then with the bungee, if you have it, you can alternate mm -hmm. knees in too. Very nice. So all kinds of stuff you can do with this. Um, one of the ones I really like is if from static, a little tricep, right? So just a little idea of. That's really nice for the core. Such good abs here. And also for those arms that don't wave back. It's a very nice toner there. Yep, and your legs are nice and engaged. You can see you're not too yeah. tight into the glutes. Oh, it feels so good in your stomach. Very nice. Love that. So, this is a very basic, a very simple series that we put together for you. We have done many of the poses that are in your manual, and as we have said, we've added sprinklings oh, along sprinkles the way. The dessert. <laughs> yes. We wanted to keep this organic, and we had a lot of fun, and we hope you had a lot of fun. Both uh, Marcy and I, we will be developing other DVDs for sale. They will be a little bit more hardcore. Some of them will focus on therapeutics. Some of them will focus on, you know, more intense practice. Certain body parts. Certain body I parts. I quickly do, I just want to open up my shoulders today. Or right. I just want to work on the core stabi stability. Right. 20 minute workouts, 30 minute workouts, hour workouts. So we have a lot of fun things in store for you. We would like to thank you very much for purchasing and using the Mighty Body Band. And we would like to thank you in advance for all your support. And please, we are always accessible. Email us, blog to us. We would love to interact with you. Absolutely. So have something new that you want to share with us. Maybe they, they thought we haven't thought of it. That's right. Chances are we have. <laughs> yes, of course. So we bid you peace. Please visit us on the web at mbb.me. Okay, www.mbb.me. So Miguel Latronica. Marcy Caron. And together we thank you. Namaste. Namaste.